Hi! How's it going? Welcome to This Week in Esports. It's the 44th show. Wow, we almost have more. <laughs> uh, this is like a never-ending joke. I'm so embarrassed. I just feel bad for Scott, who just keeps having to remind me. Oh. me. I'm going to get a yelling at, at after the show. Guys, How's welcome to Thursday. Welcome to Thursday. It's Thursday. That's you know what? what? In fairness, we had a number of things happen today. Yeah. It's a very Friday the 13th feel. Very um, yeah. We had, uh, you know, uh, some uh, couldn't get into an office earlier. That was mm. why we couldn't go live. And then, of course, the blackout. The blackout. 2018. The entire building over Just here went. in Redmond. In fact, so several buildings went black. It's crazy. As yeah. in, no light. Now, well, if you there remember, was just, yeah. if you're a historian of the show, this happened a few weeks ago. It is so. true, and we did the best that we could. I think you did a fantastic job. Thank you. You guys then ended up using the awesome feature from the phone, Mixer Create. Mixer Create. Speaking of Mixer, did you know? that we are live and interactive on Mixer. What? What does that mean, That Malik? means two things. We have FTL, which is low latency, and interactivity means you interact with us as the show goes on. That's simple. That's great. Very simple. Fantastic. Now, the esports world is constantly changing and busier than ever, and since the show is for you, you get to decide what we talk about, what we cover, all that hype. So how do we do that? Well, you simply check out. Kate's got the got the uh, cowboy gun things going on. It's a holster, Malik. The holster. I was trying to figure out the word, but you know, words escape me. Um, so you're going to see voting options below the video window. Below. Yeah, and so we're going to... The window. Let's see, where am I? Oh, yeah, we may be up on the desk, but this is your show. We'll have trivia, more videos, highlights, more, and more, more interviews with people more, in the more, scene. More, more, and much, more, more, much more. more. more, more. More, more. So more. be sure to get your selection in if you want to hear the latest and greatest. If you want to know about your favorite esports, or as we like to call it, esports e sometimes, spurts. because Tara's legacy lives on, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, absolutely make sure you get in and vote. And because the trivia is also, we have trivia today. Is that correct, Scottamo? I think so. We could have trivia. And if we do, Maybe. now or any other day, you're going to want to put yourself in there because there are leaderboards, leaderboards at the end. And if there's one thing us gamers understand, it's the need to be on top. That's right. And so uh, Lennox is not here, so he will not be on this leaderboard as yeah. he's been for the past few weeks. He's busy, you know, just doing nothing. Oh, she's going to get his phone over out. He's going to vote. He is going to vote. That's true. <sighs> anyway, but before we get into all those games, trivia, interviews, and all the rest of it, it's time to get our top segment for the week, and that's Clip of the Week. Ooh, Clip of the Week. For this week, we've got... We have an upcoming fighting Hi. game tournament coming to Mixer that should tickle your fancy. I'm sure you've all heard of Dragon Ball Fighters, Street Fighter V, and Tekken 7. So that means you'll be pleased to hear about an event called Body Count Fighting V that will be happening this Saturday from the Machinima Studios in Burbank, California. Yeah, this is the very definition of hype. Fellow WWE wrestling superstar Xavier Woods lent a hand in the production of the event promo we're about to uh, show off. And if he doesn't get you excited for this event on Saturday, which you can find Mixer.com slash BC Fight and other tuners, we don't know what will. Let's check it out. Our clip of the week for Body Count Fighting 5. April 7th. 18 elite players will enter the ring. Oh! To compete in Dragon Ball Fight. We got your crucial eyes up in that Street Fighter 5. Set my brother, kiss to the deck and seven. Double a shot, just build your team around that water. Rounds will be won. Eyes black and blue. Flowers in your way. Champions will ride. Every time I take a step, I crack a little earth. I push it through the pain. History will be made. And I ain't even worried about the score. I know we winning. Had a lot from the beginning. Hold up. All I want to do is put my hand to my ear and get the whole entire crowd to tell ya. Tune in to Body Count Fighting 5 on April 7th on twitch.tv backslash BC Fighting. You can keep the pause, I'm only interested in gold. Okay. Uh -huh. There it is, Dragon Ball Fighters. Or Fighter Z, mm. you decide. Yeah. <laughs> Street Fighter V and Tekken 7. This should be a fun event with all of those names listed. Now, remember, you can watch this event, and I don't mean to plug it twice, but I'm gonna. Why not? Mixer.com slash BC Fighting and other tuners. I don't know why we use the word tuners. It's very industry word. Oh, it's an industry from like when we needed to tune things, right? Ah, back beep, in the beep, day. Beep. Yeah, everything's Truth. digital now. 
Anyway, it starts at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's 5 p.m. Pacific. And if you can't check it out, be sure to check this show out. The one that we're on right now that you're already here for next week. And we'll do a recap segment on the event. That's right. Hype, 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 hype. So tune in. That's called a teaser. That is called a teaser. I know my things. I looked it up. I got ready Inside for Inside baseball, this one. That's me. That's me. Now, interactivity is going to be enabled for the show with voting from time to time. Right now, you should see four choices to choose from that select the next segment. These choices are below the video window Here in the go. interactive section. Just click on the one you want. It's that simple. You have 30 seconds to vote. You only get to choose one per segment, and the results update in real time. Truth. So, um, Here it is. This is what we got. We got Halo 5. Ooh, I love it. Big stuff coming up for them, of course. Absolutely. FGC Nordical Regionals, or NorCal. <laughs> Northern California. NorCal. Right, not Nordical. Uh, same could have, You know, it could have been Northern pilot. California, but like off the coast, so it's yeah. like Nordical. Exactly. Anyway, uh, and then the Fighting Community, which is FGC, of course. League of Legends and Smite Pro League. All big names. And I'm all esports. Going to vote for Halo 5. Woo! Vote, no, also, no, no, I'll see it. Uh, don't forget to follow the channel so you can use our emotes, by the way. Uh, you can use mine. It's uh, Colin League Star, and Kate's is Colin Kate because she's original and she just has. <laughs> or Kate. super not creative. <laughs> oh, that's not true. <laughs> la, anyway, la, la. It looks like Halo 5 won. Yay! So, do if you, you mind? Don't mind if I, no, oh, oh, you should. Want to play rock, paper, scissors? Well, for no, no. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm giving it to you right oh, there. I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to tap out of this one. That's <laughs> all you. you, boo. All right, let's see if I regret this. After nearly four months <laughs> of Halo esports, we have finally reached the culmination of all that Spartan on Spartan action. You. The 2018 Halo World Championship Finals, a monument to all of your wins. 16 teams of dedicated Spartans will compete for their share of one million doll hairs and the most prestigious Halo esports title of all Halo World Champions. Groups were selected at a draw event following the Columbus Finals on March 25th. Mm -hmm. The competing 16 teams culled from across various events during the season were sorted into groups of four. Their placements are as follows. Group A consists of Splite, Straight Rippin', Fable Esports, and Psychotic Gaming. Mm -hmm. Group B consists of Tox, Renegades, Wise Gaming, and Mind Freak. Mm -hmm. Group C consists of rep Repres... Reciprocity. Reciprocity, that's a word. It's Oxygen a lot supremacy. of oxygen. It's a lot of things. <laughs> Maestro Gaming. Maestro. And Maestro, there you go. The, the I, you know what? I know I stumbled on it the first time. Really? Yeah. And Team Infuse. And finally, Group D is Team Envious, Elevate, Vexed, and Team Immunity. Now, the event kicks off in Seattle on April 13th. That's right here. It is indeed. Wow. At CenturyLink Field Event Center. Mm -hmm. For those of you looking to attend live, tickets are on sale now. Simply head to Halo.gg for more info. And if you're comfortable watching the action from your home, every 4v4 match at the finals will be broadcast live on Mixer.com slash Halo for your viewing pleasure. Truth. Not sure who to root for. Unsure of the path the teams have taken to get to this monumental event mm -hmm. we've got you covered oh, yeah. we're bringing you part two of our special extended coverage of the road to the halo world championship 2018 join us april 6th at 10 a.m pacific Stop. for a deep dive look at the teams competing at the finals exclusively on mixer.com slash this week in esports it's true and actually uh while we put up the uh lovely uh, i guess we'll do some polling here in a second but i can tell you as a uh, going to be hosting that hosting that with Ooh. two fabulous individuals from 343 industries you know them as tashi and strong side tashi and strong side both have been on every single road uh every single excuse me <laughs> today's thursday they have been on every single stop on that world ro renowned tour yeah. a lot of those teams um they've got the first ever from new zealand we've got Ooh. somebody coming from uh we got the uh, psychotic gaming which uh, won the Mexico City Open nice. for the LATAM region. And then basically from there, it's NA versus EU. So lots of fun Ooh. stuff happening, lots of storylines. If you're interested in Halo, mm -hmm. if you enjoy eSports, mm -hmm. or if you just want to learn more about this premiere event, tune in tomorrow. Tune in. Ah, I said it. It's, oh, you don't like saying tune in? Colloquialism. Uh, Watch, turn on your stream. Yeah. Press the power it. on your computer, Dora. On your connected device. Of truth, choice. truth. Now, I'm very excited for this um, because this is going to be my first ever esports event that I've ever been to. Oh, and I love so Halo. we will be there. That's yeah. the other thing. Very important. I'm so excited for it. If you um, want to see these lovely faces. Then, uh, well, mine less than Kate's probably, but I will be there no, no less. And uh, I'm excited to see, you know, obviously traditional sports are a thing, but the fandom and the excitement of esports so is going to be So this is your first land. First. Dude. I'm so excited. You might. If you're like me, pee your pants a little bit because it's so much. I think I'm going to cry. Uh, I think I'm going to cry. You might. You know what? I'm it's just weep. overwhelming. And 
nobody's going to judge you here. This is a safe place. Mm, Chat, you. would you agree? Thank you. I'm going to say a big yes to that, even though nobody said anything. <laughs> uh, excellent, yes. So that's pretty much how we do this. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Smurfs first, uh, Smurf 69, your first uh, esports event was Halo, Halo 2, 2 Anniversary. Nice. Like nice. that, like that. Halo, Halo is so iconic, and I'm, I just love that. It's my favorite first-person shooter, and so I love that this is going to be my first event, and it's just going to be so exciting. I love it, and we've got a lot of incredible gameplay yeah. and a lot of incredible teams coming out, and I could not be more excited. Same. Sorry. Same uh, cool. So uh, yeah, maybe perhaps we move it along, but yeah. we don't know. We'll we'll yes, there we have there we it. Are. We're going to vote. Here are our options. Once again, uh, I see Halo Five on again. Do we have another thing for them? It's okay. It's okay. What I will say, just vote for FGC NorCal Regionals or League of <laughs> Legends or Overwatch Contenders. Just pick one of those. And yeah. if you pick Halo, then we'll just pick the next one. <laughs> the next one Joke's on you. It's um, true. I'm going to place my vote. Place it. Uh, oh. See, I'm going to be the one that I'm going to be the one League of Legends mm, vote on there. You're a fan, yeah? I am, but also we're coming, I mean, we're, we're really coming down to it now. We've got NA and EU spring <sighs> split finals happening right now. Yeah. And really, this is all going to be, you know, until MSI, which is Mid-Season Invitational, comes later on this spring, we're not going to have much League, uh, league play. Got so us. this is the time. This is it. This You're is into Mulbaz. But, you know, Overwatch is very strong. The fandom also, of Overwatch. For sure. People love Blizzard. And uh, that translates into votes for Overwatch. It's Which? true. So that means, uh, uh, Scott, it sounds like Overwatch contenders because we don't have a... Overwatch. Overwatch contenders it is. Thanks, everybody. Here we go. Oh, Me. you. All right. Another week has come and gone, and with it, more matches of Overwatch contenders. Let's do that thing where we do that we do and recap the scores from the North American and European regions. Let's. Regions. On day one of play in North America, Toronto Esports swept Grizzlies 4-0. Mayhem Academy took their first loss against XL2 Academy 1-3, and Gladiators Legions devoured last night's leftovers. Love that name, 4-0. On day two, NRG Esports defended sim defeated Simplicity 3-1, and Vision beat Optic Academy 3-2, and it was a bye week for Fusion University. Now, day one of the action in Europe kicked off with the Copenhagen Flames defeating Mosaic Esports 3-1, followed by a double 4-0 sweep. As CIS Hope uh, beat Young and Beautiful, and Eagle Gaming defeated Bazooka Puppies. These names are fantastic. That's what they called me in college. <laughs> <laughs> day two was a cleaning day once again as all three games ended with a 4-0 victory. Angry Titans defeated Team Singularity, Orglis and Hungry <laughs> defeated That's a Disband and British Hurricane defeated Team Giganti or Giganti or one of the two pronunciations. I don't know. It's true. By the way, a little update, folks. Lennox is watching. He is in the chat. Uh, you have been briefed. Do not vote. Lennox. It's true. <laughs> now, we are past the halfway point of part one of the 2018 contender season. Though the dominant teams still remain on top, there were a few upsets this week that proved that the underdogs aren't out of the comp competition just yet. Now, for more info on the matches in other five regions or check out the VODs of the matches we recapped right here, right meow, head over to overwatchcontenders.com. Boom. That's how I That's end that. That's how they do that. <laughs> Whoops. There you go. And he's absolutely right. Body Count fight, Fighting 5 will be on Mixer tomorrow. Something to remember, folks. There you go. Telmo says... I had no idea about that. That's what we're here for. We're here to fill you in on the esports news. Yay! Kate and I, sometimes Rakari, when he decides to show up. And, That's you know. very, very, very <laughs> seldom. <Yeah>. JK. <laughs> we love Rakari. We love Rakari. Just love giving him poop. <laughs> Why not? Where's anyway. the emoji when you need it? Okay, <laughs> let's talk about what we're going to talk about next. Yeah. Uh, shall we chat? We shall. Uh, and everybody, Linux is in the, uh, like we said, he's in the uh, chat here. Chat so uh, big up to him uh, doing some Hype Zone stuff over at PAX oh, East. So cool. I was watching big it earlier. Stuff. Um, and they're doing Hype Zone Live. They're playing Fortnite. Josh, and we've got Ethan. Yeah, and they're doing a fantastic job. I'm just so jealous that I can't be there, but I love the Hype Zone. Obviously, you can go to mixer.com slash Hype Zone Fortnite and watch this every day of the week, but they're doing it live down at PAX, and it's just a cool thing seeing them mess with people who are very close to that mm -hmm. victory royale. Absolutely. Ooh. Okay, speaking of victories, we've got the possibility of Dota 2. We've got League of Legends still on our boards. The FGC Nor NorCal Regionals. I can't do things today. Okay. And Smite Pro League. So they're all on here. Looks like Smite's doing himself a fave. I'm going to ruin the vote. But I'm going to rock the... Oh. Smite. Ooh. Well, you know what? Smite has been killing it. Ah. Oh, Smite and League are both... Tied. What happens in the event of a tie there, Scott? Host choice. 
This would... Nope. Smite one. All right, there we go. Here we go. Let's talk smite. <laughs> Do you mind if I if I jump in I on this doohickey? Pardon my French. <laughs> the Smite Pro League kicked off its fifth season just two weeks ago, and 12 teams from North America and Europe are going head to head in the best of three matches. I love best of threes. Too best good. of ones is just terrible. It's just too, too much. Best of five is too long. Well, <laughs> depending on which game. Sweet anyway, spot. truth. Now, on the North American side of the battleground of the gods. Luminosity quickly defied expectations as they steamrolled reigning champs E United 2 to 0. E United was undefeated last week and their complete defeat by Luminosity Gaming could be a demonstration of things to come for that Luminosity squad. Now the other team to watch last week was Space Station Gaming. These are new on these guys are new on the scene and I love it, mm -hmm. which has some of the top players in the group. Now Space Station first wrecked E United 2-0, then took Trifecta 2-1. On the European side across the pond, Team NRG made a big statement as they won their matches against Obey and SK Gaming and finished week 2 with four match wins and no losses. That's that's 4-0, as they say. As the they league. say. They do say that. It's true. Now, Dignitas also won both of their rounds, but dropped one to Team Rival, which we're excited to see as a potential competition to lead the juggernauts, Dignitas, and NRG. You want to talk about week three, Malik? Yeah, let's do it. Now, week three took place this week, and we'll get we'll get you all the details on next week's show. So to visit the VODs, visit Mixer, catch the VODs, visit Mixer.com slash Smite Game, or check out their Twitter at Smite Pro. Oh, yeah. Very simple. At Very Smite Pro. That's all you do. That's all you got to do. S-M-I-T-P-R-O. I played Smite, Smite once. Pro. Did uh, you? Now, while it wasn't for me, I could see why people love it a lot. It's uh -huh. it's a very uh, kind of addicting game, and, and people mm -hmm. play it. And lots of people... They were showing it on Mixer, and the viewership oh, they've was been, crazy. Yeah. I will say this. Their spectator version... Top notch. Top notch. If you want to get into MOBAs, check it out. Check oh, it and out. now here we got which team is not a Smite? North American team. Ooh, let There's me some my good answers. ones. And uh, the once again, as per usual, every week, the idea and the theory is to try and beat Linux. Yes. Now, which team is not a Smite New North American team? United Space Station Splice or Team Rival? Ooh. I'm not going to vote because vote at the end, we don't want our names. We no. really just want Linux to be able to be at the top of yeah. the leaderboards. Or he just wants that. Heart you real hard, <laughs> Linux. <laughs> I think I know, I know the answer. Do you know the answer? I do because I have the answer sheet. Oh, yeah. What's the answer? I don't know, actually. I don't have it pulled up. Is it C? It's, I think it's C. Team Rival. Team Rival. Kate, you led me astray. Did I lead you astray? You led me astray. Ah, I'm so wow. sad. Wow. It's okay. You know why? I was just trying to throw you guys off. You were trying to get your last minute answers in. I wanted to make sure you didn't pick the right answer. Sure. So that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. I think that's a great excuse, and I think you should continue to say, <laughs> ah! Oh, not North American. Oh, very uh, tricky, Linux. Uh, Linux is just. I was like, somewhere. I'm like sitting there going, Team Rival is a team. Yeah. Nope. That's not okay. North American. Didn't read that part. Let's talk about number two on the trivia boards. How much money will be on the line at Halo World Championship Finals? Oh, I know this one. Oh, I, just, <laughs> I, it. I, I watched it. it happen. Oh no! I was Guys, so excited. What can I say? I love it. I love it. I love it. I was excited. Okay, we've got. That's fair. Hey, listen. I think a lot of people are excited about yeah. the. Yeah particular prize pool right. and we've got a lot of uh yeah got a lot of uh esports fans so i will say i'm gonna give you a little hint don't go against the grain on this one look at which one is pulling away <laughs> just, just that's go with quite that the hint yeah well, is it yeah i guess that's true i like uh, it though and, and uh up. solid solid down the middle with the with the d, yeah, d one million a that's million dollars so much money you know what you could buy with a million dollars a million mcdonald's cheeseburgers because they're on the one dollar menu again so if Fun you facts want to, from that, Malik. That is, that is a potential thing that the world that's, could do. Those are, that's just math. That is science. And we just You just dropped some knowledge. What can I say, Kate? What can I say? You did it. Last <laughs> one. Here we go. What's the combined Overwatch Contenders prize pool? Ooh, now this is an interesting one. The combined Overwatch Contenders. Mm. Contenders being the optimum word here. Got it. Okay. And it's combined. Do I have to do math for this one? Because I don't know how to do math. I need a calculator. TI-83, anybody? <laughs> anybody? I was an 84 girl, actually. Oh, you were the one with the 84s I was so jealous of because you guys had the games. I guess you could put games on the 83 as well. You probably could. But it just You know better. what was real good? What was that? The 86s. Oh, I've never, I've never seen an 86. Man, nice little, like, I gotta look this blue up. back buttons. I don't believe you. Fair enough. Go for let's, it. Let's see. You're about to be owned. No way. And, you know, to be... What is uh? Mm, okay, okay, okay. 
Solid $3.2 million, and that is for our Academy Contenders, our Contenders League. There you go. Also known as, in some cases, the Challenger League. Those are the people that haven't made it into the AAA title dome areas. Got it. And they're going to walk away collectively with $3.2 million, huh? It is not a bad way to do it. <sighs> I got to start learning how to play these video games because uh, I could use some money. I got student loans. I got a car loan to pay off. I got just a lot of debt, so. You know what else we got? What's that? More choices to choose. <laughs> so from. many choices. We got FGC NorCal Regional. So you know what? I'm going to pick that one because... That one feels like the right move. You also got Dota 2. League of Legends is still on the board. Halo WC London Highlights. But that's a video, isn't it? It is a video. I should have chosen that one. Darn. I know. I'll oh, choose this is what happens you. when you don't think about your decisions, people. But honestly, any of these four choices are going to be fantastic. They are. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, listen, the, the reality is we're, you know... This is an esports show all about esports. And so e we, we get to just talk about all the things that we really like to talk about. Oh, FGC. FGC NorCal Regionals. I think you were going to do it. You want yeah, me to do yeah, it? Yeah, I would well, love. So I would Why love. Not? So the NorCal Regionals is California's premier fighting game tournament held in Sacramento. It took place last weekend, March 30th, 30th and April 1st, and featured all the favorite fighting games, as well as exhibitions and after-hours gaming room. Man, I would love to have been to some of these. I, I'm a big FGC fan, uh, especially on LAN, because it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Now, as for the competition competition itself, there was quite a show of talent from all over the world. And considering some of the top fighters were knocked out in pool play, it was pretty clear that this competition and its players weren't taking NorCal lightly. There were nearly 300 pre-registered players for Street Fighter, 150 for Dragon Ball Fighters, and over 100 for Tekken. So let's take a look at how each of those events panned out. Now, in the Tekken portion, Echo Fox's Saint stood out from the start. This South Korean player isn't new to the top, and his versatile, action-packed playstyle makes him incredibly fun to watch. But player Qdans, Qdans, Qdans wouldn't let Saint's reign go unchallenged. Now, after each of them made it to the top of the bracket for the grand final, Kudan came out strong, taking the first two games, but Saint retaliated and took the next two. The final game was the most intense of all. Saint and Kudan traded wins while they were old, uh, like they were old friends. In the very last round, Kudan nearly had it in the bag when Saint, literally hanging onto a tiny fragment of life, managed to come all the way back to take the whole thing. The Dragon Ball Fighters uh, winners final and the grand final came down to Go Goichi versus Moke. Goichi. Goichi. That's Goichi. That sounds that sounds right. Yeah. But this was a little less dramatic than the Tekken final. Goichi is a strong player and a crowd favorite, and he took the grand final with three unanswered wins. Now you might recognize the name Tokido. Yes. Yes that I got it right, or yes that you're a fan? Yes that I'm a fan. Also you Maybe got it both. right. Yeah, that's fine. And that's because this guy pops up on our show quite often <laughs> when talking about Street Fighter. In this portion of the competition, Verlorin made a valiant effort to stop Tokido from reaching the top and only lost two to three. Meanwhile, Knuckle Dew was crushing the other side of the bracket, which eventually put him up against Tokido in the winner's final. However, down, down in the loser's final, Diego the Beast was making his own return after being knocked out by Knuckle Dew in the semifinal. After showing off some serious skill, Dago got his revenge on Knuckle Dew in the loser's final, giving him the chance to take on Takedo in the grand final. But maybe Diago, Dago. It's, it's Daigo. Daigo, there you go. Let's go with Daigo. But maybe Daigo ah, yes, used up much. all his luck fighting his way back to the top because it wasn't long before Takedo put him away, taking the grand final three to one. There we are. Mm. And that's it. There it is. FGC NorCal Regionals. That's the in one. In the bag. It's true. Well, let's talk about the next uh, situation. Let's now do that it. We've, uh, now we've talked, gone through NorCal Regionals. Thanks, get ready, for saying it's Daigo. Yep. It's spelled two different ways. In the, so oh. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Nice, nice. It's well, okay. actually, we it's have, okay. uh, luckily, we've got ourselves a little uh, IRL esports we get to talk about now. now. I am excited. Obviously, one of the goals of this show is to highlight the amazing people and events that happen in the esports competitive game and space. And every week, we'll try to feature a different personality in that space. And this time, we're going to dive into a unique world of esports law. Go with us on this one. It's going to be good. Like any other industry, laws are there to uphold integrity and make sure everyone is playing fair. Now, as eSport grows, and boy has it, so does our need to make sure everything is on the up and up. And we have someone from a law firm that specializes in eSports joining us today to discuss a little bit more on the topic. Please welcome Krista Heiner from ESG Law to the show. There she is. How's it going, Krista? Hello. How are you doing? How are you guys doing? Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you for well, having me. I am well. Yes. Now, Krista... 
for those who don't know who you are, give us a little bit of background uh, about yourself. Sure. Well, my name is Krista Heiner. I'm an esports lawyer with the law firm ESG Law, stands for Electronic Sports and Gaming Law. I personally have practiced law for almost eight years now. I've been with ESG since August. ESG is the world's first esports only law firm. So I get to combine two of my passions, gaming and esports, with the law, which is super cool. Uh, I've been a gamer my whole life, as you can probably guess, since it's one of my <laughs> passions. So it's really awesome to be able to work in the space in this amazing industry, which is growing like crazy. And like you mentioned, the law is evolving as well. So uh, we are happy to play a role in that industry. Man, and you're such a at the precipice too, right? You've got all these things moving and changing and evolving to your point. So one of the things that obviously makes ESG stand out is that you guys are the first or one of the first, or you're certainly at that beginning gate there, law firms to specialize in clients who are specifically from the esports industry. So this industry as a whole is still growing, as you mentioned, and it's good to see companies like yours support it so heavily. Can you describe how ESG law operates with its clients and who they might be? There's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Uh, first, <laughs> yes, we are we we are the first esports only law firm. I'm pretty sure we're still the only one. There might be others out there. If there are not yet, there soon will be. But no matter what, we'll, we'll always be the first and the best. Exactly. Um, obviously. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll jump into the clients first because I'm sure that's probably going to be the most interesting to your audience. And honestly. Pick a major team organization in North America. There's a very good chance that we work with them or have worked with them. Mm -hmm. A few are Optic, TSM, Cloud9, Team Liquid, Envy, Immortals, uh, Dignitas, a lot of Overwatch teams, um, you know, Spitfire, Valiant, Gladiators. The list goes on and on. We also work with a lot of broadcast talent, especially in the Overwatch League, mm. and some event organizers as well, such as Beyond the Summit. Um, if anyone's interested in learning more, there's a bigger sampling of our client list on our website at esglaw.com. Mm -hmm. But as to your other question about how we work with our clients, how we support our clients, we support our clients like any lawyer would any business because, yes, these companies operate in the esports space, but they truly are businesses. So they deal with your traditional uh, issues and matters like business growth and acquisitions and staff, not just esports talent. So we support them in a variety of ways, advising on those matters, as well as uh, handling contracts for talent and other transactional work like sponsorship contracts and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, our clients are all over the country. We have some clients in other countries as well. So we support them from afar from here mm -hmm. in the U.S. Um, but along that same theme of dealing with clients that are in other countries, we have clients across time zones, but it doesn't matter because esports never sleeps. It's 24-7. No, it doesn't. You're it, right. And that's why it's evolving so fast. And anybody that's involved in esports loves it. So they never want to take time off. Um, but it's pretty <laughs> cool. It makes for a very exciting and dynamic workplace. That's for sure. Um, for example, last November, at the start of the free agency period in North America LCS for League of Legends. Yeah. The free agency period started at midnight, I think it was Pacific time, which is 2 a.m. for me, 3 a.m. for one of our associates who's, who's in New York. So for those few days, we were up until 3, 4 a.m. doing just nothing but player contracts for a couple of days. So um, it's erratic, but it's really exciting to be a part of the industry. And yeah, it never sleeps. That's oh, brilliant. Love the excitement and passion. Now, you mentioned that you all have really long days sometimes. I'm interested in what a typical day at ESG Law looks like, it must, if there is even a typical day. Um, sure, yeah. In a typical day, I would say the main things that we deal with involve talent contracts. So if we're representing the teams, we're helping them out by drafting and uh, Sometimes negotiation, sometimes negotiating specific terms with a player's agent or lawyer, uh, but typically drafting the player contracts, streamer contracts as well. And like I mentioned, these businesses are businesses, so they have other considerations, other staff. Some of them have uh, their employing writers or people in their accounting departments, administrative assistants, things like that. And we help a lot with those contracts as well. That's a huge part of what we do. Um, some of the more exciting work that we do uh, for your viewers is buyout agreements. So when teams are trading players with each other, we'll represent one, sometimes both sides of that deal. 
Um, We also handle a lot of league rule compliance. So through our work, because we do esports only work, we become very familiar with the rule sets that um, leagues such as Riot, for example, impose on the teams that participate and any formal league. I mean, we've seen a lot of new, uh, new leagues uh, start up in the last few years. You have the H1Z1 league, uh, Supercell's Clash Royale league, um, all sorts of them. They all have their different rule sets. We're really familiar with all of those. So we're able to properly counsel clients on their business decisions and their contracts, how they can and cannot maybe deal with a player trade or something like that in light of that league's specific rule set and then sponsorship deals and other things like that. Um, But doing each of these things, when we do each of these things, we have to remember that every piece needs to fit into this puzzle Mm. uh, because a league over here might have a term that in their agreement with the team that prohibits a certain type of sponsor or a certain buyout process or certain terms and player contracts. And you have to understand we're working on each of those projects how and if it could potentially impact or shape a move that the team or the organization wants to make over here. So you have to have a really good understanding of how it all fits together, which is complicated, but it's pretty exciting to be a part of, especially since these leagues and rules are all changing so fast as the industry grows. Absolutely. Okay, so this is this is one that I'm sure chat will appreciate uh, as well as our viewers in general. Based on your time at ESG Law and, and your time as an esports fan, what is one piece of advice current and future players should know because obviously there's been as we all know and within every scene there are yeah. bad bad eggs bad apples there's the good and the bad what are some words of caution for folks out there before they get to someone like yourself okay So like I mentioned before, we typically represent team organizations, and I'm very proud to say that the clients that we work with are not the bad eggs that you hear about. Uh, They really do do emphasize positive growth in the industry, and I'm regularly astounded by the thoughtfulness uh, with which uh, these team owners and the people in charge approach the decisions they make, not only from the perspective of how it impacts their players, but also how it affects the ecosystem as a whole. That said, yeah, there there are other organizations out there that are not prepared to enter the esports scene, be that because they don't follow through on the promises that they make to the players, whether it's because they can't or because they don't want to or some other reason. Maybe they just simply don't understand the space. So my biggest piece of advice is twofold and probably predictable. Uh, one, be cautious about the teams that you work with. I mean, that goes for anybody in any industry with any employer. But two, and this is the predictable advice, please get representation. Having an agent or a lawyer to assist you when you're signing with a team is crucial, especially since a lot of players are so young and not necessarily sophisticated business people. Um, There are plenty of attorneys out there at this time who are trying to get in the space who will probably work with you for free. That said, if you can pay someone, you're probably going to get a more experienced esports attorney or agent who knows the space and can help counsel you and really help guide you in your whole career. Nice. So good. Words to live by. Uh, you all are doing some really essential stuff, and uh, that's some really great advice. Um, now, we have a, our favorite question on this show, um, and that is, if you could tell skeptical people one thing up, uh, to know about esports or competitive gaming in general uh, or why they should get into it, what would it be? Boy, you know, there are <laughs> so many things, so many things right. you can say. Um, I've made so many arguments to my family throughout. The right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we're going to have you, Krista, we'll put, have you put your fan hat back on right. there. <laughs> I know, I know to try to, you know, explain to people that are not familiar with the space why this is such an important industry and why what's happening is so exciting and cool and should be embraced. Um, so, yeah, we could talk about how esports events sell out major stadiums like the Staples Center in an hour or how we have all these high profile investors like Robert Kraft and so and so. Or how if skeptics could just get past the fact that esports has the word sports in the title and focus (laughs) on the potential of this amazing industry. Why does everybody do that? I don't know. Um, But I would say one of my favorite points to make recently is esports really creates a space for so many people and fans who otherwise don't really have a community, something to be a part of. And whether we're talking about cord cutters that don't have the means to watch traditional sports or that subset of gamers who have been outcasts because of the stigma associated with gaming, esports gives these people a space, and that's really special. It's also, 
uh, from a business person's standpoint, a huge demographic. But I think that's what makes esports so unique as a business. And I think that's really special. And then, of course, if you enter this space and you become a successful streamer, you might be able to stream with Drake. So. And then, you know what? If all roads could My lead goodness. to Drake and Fortnite, I think we'd all be better off. A lot better off. A it's huge. What we're all going Anyway. <laughs> now, I will say, Chris, a huge thank you. The chat is going wild here. They are loving this, and you have some really great points. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, where can people find you? Give us your deets. Any special shout outs? Sure, my deets. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Krista Heiner, K R I S T A H I N E R. And you can learn more about our law firm at ESGlaw.com. And there it is. There it is. Krista, thank you so much. Fantastic. Appreciate you being on the show. You have a fabulous rest of your day. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye, Krista. That was so good. That was so good. It's, it's so funny because obviously esports is just coming up, but the work that she's doing with her team is so important, especially mm -hmm. for a lot of the new players coming in, a lot of new teams. And so, yeah, I think 100% you're going to see more, more places like ESG Law pop up. It's going to be great. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, like, take a look at your polling right now, but while, while you're voting, I will say, like, we asked her who she worked with, and the list of names Insane. was crazy. Yeah. If they're, it's like if you're working with them, you are the top. Yeah, very well done, list. ESG Law and Krista Heiner. Okay, Absolutely. moving right along. We got some voting options. Got some voting options. You guys want to talk about some uh, Halo WC London highlights? I do. Smite console series. I know some of our people in chat wanted some Smite. League of Legends or Dota 2. And now Kate's from the South somehow. Could be from the South. <laughs> I made my choice. I made. Oh, Reba. Oh, Reba! Reba. You guys don't know the Malik loves Reba. I'm a big fan of Reba. Uh, if I could true. show you my desktop, I would. Um, but don't, don't do a zoom in, nah, please. That would be... God, please. <laughs> just in general. That's just, that's just good <laughs> just good sense all around. Yeah, exactly. That's true, too. Uh, Ooh, looks like, like we're doing a... Another Halo one? Another Halo, a Halo highlight, they you guys say. You know me too well. Okay, so Video Highlights is our segment where we get to showcase stories within the esports scene that we think you need to watch. Now, for this video, we have a team profile done by the Gfinity team ahead of the Halo World Championship London event. Not sure one of the presenters, Lottie, meets with one of the players who will be attending the finals in Seattle later this month. Team Maestro, Maestro. player Ramirez. Let's check it out. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are here in Sheffield to speak to one of Europe's most storied Halo players. We are here to speak to Ramirez about the highs and the lows of the Halo World Championships and about this upcoming 2018 season. Ramirez, thank you so much for letting me into your home to speak to you today. How are you? How are things? Yeah, I'm all cool. I'm enjoying my, enjoying my day. <laughs> Ramirez, let's, let's talk about Halo right back at the start. How did you get into it? I've been playing for a long time, around 10 years probably, at least competitively, maybe a little bit longer casually. But yeah, I started playing Halo 2 online when it was original like Xbox, and it was good fun then. Sort of grew into a bit more of a hobby. I started playing a lot of time, and I thought if I'm going to play this for as much as someone to play a job, I might as well get a wage for it, sort of thing. So that's that really started out, yeah. How old are you? I'm 23 now. You're 23, and how old were you when you started? I think about probably 11 years old when I was really young. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really young. So were you playing it throughout school? Yeah, primary school. <laughs> year five, year six. I mean, literally, primary school kid, year five, year six. I was still playing Halo then. Like, not as obviously religiously as I do now, but I was still playing a lot, yeah. Let's talk about your career now in Halo. Um, so you've actually qualified for every Halo World Championship so far in the finals. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, starting on Team Infused, and then 2017, London Conspiracy. How do you keep on top of that competition? How do you become the best you can be in the Halo Championship? It's mainly just having the bottle, because a lot of... Uh, European players don't maybe take it seriously, some of the Americans do in the mentality and the way they approach it. And I think that's where I've trumped a lot of European players because I've got the right attitude a lot of the time and the right mentality to take the games, even when I've not been the better player. Coming into the Halo 2018 World Championships, what are your goals that you've got for this? What, what are you looking to set yourself a bar? What's your bar? I feel myself, I've been underperforming way too long for the last couple of years. I've not really been giving it full throttle. I've just sort of been doing it because I'm a Halo player and I've been doing it long enough. But I think the last few months I've been a bit honest with myself and actually decided I want to do decent this season. And I think that's actually been shown in my gameplay that you play miles better than I have been the last few months, regardless of my placement, which is what, what, which is what I say when I've been, I don't really care about the placements. I've been playing better and I've, I've not actually been winning. But yeah, that, that, that's my goal this season, play as well as I can and get myself back on top for Halo 6. 
Awesome. Ramirez, thank you so much for speaking to me. It was really, really good to speak to you. And I'll be seeing you very, very soon. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, if you like that video, check out Halo's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Halo Waypoint and follow their channel on mixer.com slash Halo. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a lot of goodies buried within these video highlights, so if you see it as a voting option, make sure to select it. Speaking of voting, let's open it up again. And of course, speaking of Halo, make sure that you're following that Mixer channel because obviously it's about to get spicy tomorrow yep. morning. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Pacific. No, wait. Did I get that right? Yep, 10 a.m. Yep. 10 a.m. Pacific. 10 a.m. Pacific. But you know what? Another reason to choose those video highlights is what I got to say as I take my earpiece out. Sure. Um, because it's really annoying me, but I'm just kidding. Uh, is that it allows me to get a drink of water, which I was able to do. Yay. So. Now let's talk about what we're going to be able to do. All right. And it's possible. It looks like Dota 2 is heavily favored. I'm a big fan of this you are. one. You are. Because we've got uh, MOBAs are great. MOBAs are some of the best LAN tournaments I've ever been to. Mm -hmm. However, right now we're in the middle of a major. Oh. Actually, basically at the end. So if you don't mind, I will. I Katie, will jump into the floor this. Is all yours. I'm on this. I'm on this. Okay, guys, let's talk Dota. The world's top Dota teams don't often come together, but when they do, it's electric. It's electric. Boogie, boogie, boogie. <laughs> yeah. Now, where Dota fans were once beholden to a single mega tournament, we know it as, of course, the International, Valve has gotten wise to the competitive landscape and the opportunities it holds. All that to say, Got another major tournament on our hands in the form of the Dota 2 Asia Championships. Picture this, 16 of the world's best teams converge in Shanghai, China for a piece of the $1 million prize pool and 1,500 qualifying points. Now remember, Virtus Pro, they've actually already earned themselves an invite to the International based on those point totals. And while the lion's share of a million dollars isn't anything to shake a stick at, Malik. Sure isn't. Your hands, getting your hands on some of those points can mean the difference between a chance to win millions of dollars at the International or nothing at all. Ooh, how heartbreaking. It's true. Now, for this reason, all eyes were on Team Liquid and Team Secret during this month's Dota 2 Asia Championships as each team finds themselves 900 points away from that TI invite, though sadly Team Secret, captained by the legendary puppy, was knocked out in the first round by Vichy Gaming. Whoops. But enough about early exits. Let's talk current standings. In the upper bracket, it was LGD and Minsky that are primed to take each other on in the finals match. That's actually at 10 p.m. Pacific, mm. or a little less than five, oh, seven hours. Seven hours from now. No, a little less than, little less than six hours from now. Yeah, anyway. Sometime this afternoon. Yeah. Okay, but the best of three fun is in full swing in the lower bracket. Interestingly enough, Virtus Pro, obviously the first invite, they are attempting to three-peat and could kick Vichy Gaming to the curb. Then we also got Team Liquid. They're going for the TI invite, the major prize pool, and a win from TNC Pro Team. Those grand finals between one of those four, two of those four, two of those six, that's math. Anyway, math. these top-tier Dota teams, those grand finals kick off Saturday. Head to twitch.tv slash PGL underscore Dota. Exciting. That's exciting. It's Dota 2, man. You're a big fan of Dota. I've heard it very many times, uh, and I have yet to ever watch one Dota match, but I should. You Is know, what you're telling me? I, yeah, I would say, because okay. I think that, that, that um, MOBAs as more, well, I can't say they were the original eSports, but they really took eSports to the next level mm. uh, with their LAN tournaments and their high production value and everything, and they have a special place in my heart, partially because, quite frankly, uh, the International was one of my first LAN events that I got oh, to see. Oh, so you have an attachment to I it. I do. Like and, you know, Valve's here. They are. Right, right Valve? A stone's throw away, Hi. as they say. Hey. <laughs> you, yeah, start making games to... again. Sorry, un see? unrelated to esports. Please start making games again. I think they mentioned a few weeks ago they're going to start making games again. Hey, they've got Steam and CSGO and Dota 2. I mean, I'm just saying at this point they've got two of my favorite esports titles of Maybe all time. Half-Life 3. Anyway, um, that would be great uh, if it happened. Speaking of great things... We got Bonin, and it's great, because we got Paladins, Ooh. the Smite console series, League of Legends, and Street Fighter V. You got your MOBAs, you got your right? MOBAs. You, got your, you got several MOBAs looking at. Pretty much you have MOBAs or fighting game. Fighting game. <laughs> so, hey, listen. Looks like the fighting game. You know what? I'll go. I'll jump on that. Yeah, why not? I'll jump on that bird. Well, let's switch it up, you know. There it Mix is. It up, get a, Looks oh. like a little, uh, we got some uh, Street Fighter V Capcom Pro Tour. That's exciting. Feels like it's you. Feels like you're going Feels there. Feels like it's me. It's empty. It's empty, just like my heart. That's... And my soul. 
We can talk Smite. Let's talk Smite. A little Smite action. Guys, little smite we're going to change it up. Looks like Simply Majestic wants Smites. Uh, well, no Paladins for right now. There's uh, Steve's. You know what? Harry. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Simply Majestic, we're going to talk Smite. Now, Smite Pro League kicked off its fifth season just two weeks ago, and 12 teams from North America and Europe are going head-to-head -head in best of three matches. On the North American side of the battleground of the gods, uh, Luminosity quickly defied... Did I, did I get that right? Oh, we did. I think that, we did this. I think we've already done this mm, one. It looks familiar. It does. In fairness, also Smite. Oh, console series. There we Phase go. Phase two. Thank you, Tara. Let's go for it. This Redoing time it. around. Phase two of the Smite console series kicked off this week. Now, for those unfamiliar, the Smite console series is all best of one open bracket play for three weeks. The top eight teams make it into the fourth week to duke it out in the best of three final matches for their piece of the $6,000 prize pool. Mm -hmm. Now, on the European side, we saw Team Rival once again steamroll their way to victory yet again. When they met Team Danny Dorito, I love that name. <laughs> All the names are just great in this. In the grand finals, the funny name wasn't enough to earn their mercy. Rival crushed Danny Dorito 20 to 13 in game one and brutally swept game two 24 to nine to become week one champions. Now for North America, the grand final once again came down to Elevate versus World Champs plus tax. Last week, Elevate clutched the tournament with an impressive comeback. This time, Elevate had a rough start, losing game one, but came back in even more heroic fashion, winning game two while down 13 to 21, keeping them in the tournament. Now in game three, world champs plus tax made a risky push for the enemy Titan, but Elevate turned up the Jets, shutting down their attempts and taking the game 23 to 13 to win the set. Now we have a clip from Elevate's play in these final moments, so let's watch the action unfold. Check it out. And this Phoenix does not have enough health to survive all right, at all. Look at that yeah, massive up, yeah. fire creep wave. Non-stop creeps pouring into the Ooh, Titan room now. Dr. L going to take out Panda mid just for good measure. Only Jumpa left alive. And he's going to have to watch as Elevate collapses on top of the Titan. Elevate to finally yeah, manage to secure though. this victory. 37 minutes into the contest, Dr. L takes down Jumpa. And Elevate 2-1 over the former world champs or the current champions. Rather, and they take this set crumble. here. Face to week one going the way of elevate and Ooh. that is how you do that i have to let the shoutcaster go on that one that was good yes that was good. absolutely now, to watch the smite console series head over to mixer.com slash smite games mondays at 10 a.m pacific and don't forget to watch the smite pro league as well with more information at esports.smitegame.com now and i will say that uh the truth is that we also get very, we also can get confused over here. There's a lot of esports in the world, yeah. and quite frankly, we got the Smite Pro League and the Smite Console Series, all Smite all the time, just for you. And the show's live. So. And it's also definitely live. There it is. <laughs> but this is an actually a great example of how many sports, how many esports we've got. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you think about it too, it's like you've also got you know organizations and teams like organizations like Fnatic, like Optic, mm -hmm. like Splice, like Envious. I can name. 50 more that have multiple teams huge. under multiple games. Huge. I'm just saying, keeping track is hard, but we're here for you all day, er, day. That's what we're here for. So let's talk about what we're getting ready to see. Oh, we got Street Fighter. We got, okay, so the fighting game community, you guys are represented, represented in this vote. That's right. We got Street Fighter, presumably five. Uh, yeah. Dragon Ball Fighters. Now, the chat, you tell us if you're a Fighter mm. Z person mm. or if you're a Fighters person. I said Fighter Z for the longest time, and then I was corrected by someone, but I don't actually oh. think. It's and now, been said. now I see it's actually, you know what? It was actually a trivia question. Oh. That one's on me, kids. Okay, which game at NCR, that would be NorCal Regional 2018, had the most entrance? Which one? We had Street Fighter, mm. Dragon Ball, Fighter Z. Okay, get ready. You say fight you say you say Fighter Z. Mm. Telmo, you say fighters. Man. I say fighters. That's fair. I, I get it. It looks better as Fighter Z, but I, somebody said it was fighters, so I'm gonna go with that. Telmo says it's officially pronounced fighters. Yeah. But Z, because these are better are cooler than S's, you know? Wow, so that's, I hear. that's definitive, everybody. So I hear, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, you know what? I totally, I apologize, Scott. I missed, uh, what was the answer to that one? 30 seconds remaining. Excellent. Well, let's go on to the next one. Let's go on. Because why not? All right, so how many teams made the Dota 2 Asia Championships bracket? All right. Aha! It's your chance to vote. It's Kate's like, I know this I know this, this. This one I know. I know this answer. I know it. All right. Okay. We got a, uh, no one's going for four. Looks like... Most likely because that's not the right answer. Mm -hmm. But you never know. You never know. 
You ever cheat on Seems a Seems unlikely that there would be a, mul a million dollar <laughs> major featuring only four teams. But hey, yeah. stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. I don't, I can't think of a, a single one at this point, but that's just because I'm not that smart sometimes. Oh, the answer, of course, was 16 here, folks. 16 of the world's best Dota 2 teams go mono e mono e five other monos. <laughs> that's right. That is, what is that, Spanish mono e mono? I think it is. Gosh, I hope so. Chat, tell us if it's, no, it's unos. I don't know, I don't know. Give us a lesson on languages, because we could use Oh, don't one. worry. I'm sure chat will tell us <laughs> more yeah, honestly, very soon. Yeah, honestly, chat's been very informative um, this, this week, so, you know, I Informative's a good word. <laughs> Actually, to be completely fair, I heart our chat. It's so good. Our chat is, our chat is, uh, is, is, is a lot better than the chats we've been around before. So let's talk yeah. about what we're talking about next, right. which is we got Paladin still back up all there. We got Rocket League That's and the RLCS. Book. We got League of Legends and, of course, World of Warcraft that has joined the party. Ooh, a little wow action. But you know what? I'm going to go Rocket League because um, of all the games that I could play, Rocket League is probably the easiest for me to jump in and maybe score a lucky victory. Hey. I don't know. Perhaps. It's perhaps, got rockets, perhaps. It's got cars. It's got balls. Hey, it's true. My personal thinking, and I'm really hoping that the Olympics, the first, the first Olympic, uh, East, like eSport, e is a rocket. Is rocket I want league? it to be Rocket League. Really? Although technically there was an eSports event, which actually saw, um, oh my gosh, how am I not? It's Scarlett saw her winning uh, over Solo. Mm. for the uh, StarCraft II tournament. StarCraft. Boy, okay. that was hard for me to remember all those words at the same no, time. okay. So StarCraft, interesting. Okay. Yeah, and so, that's, uh, so that was around it. But anyway, oh, Rocket League, RLCS. Wow. You were a fan. Maybe, I feel like I swayed the vote, but you know what? I'll start. You start. Since I feel bad for swaying I'm the on vote. It. All right, let's. They, they did have a related event, Tomo. Absolutely. I just couldn't remember what uh, StarCraft II was called because I'm having a day. It's okay. Starcraft. Like I always do. So it looks like we may not be talking about Rocket League. We Lake, may not be. Which is breaking my heart in the tiny little pieces, that but it's okay. That is true. LOL! Ooh, League of Legends. Now, Should I still start, or is this your... I'm happy to jump in. I'm happy to back clean up. Okay. Go for it. All right, so the North American League of Legends Championship Series, a.k.a. the NALCS, is comprised of 10 teams. These teams yes. face each other twice over the course of a season with competition stretching yeah. across two splits, summer and spring. Guess which one we're in? The spring. That's right. I'm a smart boy. Yeah, you now, are. the spring split started back at the end of January. Now, we're through the regular season, and we're already through the semifinals held March 31st and April 1st. Games were best of five, with the first game happening between Echo Fox and Team Liquid. While Echo Fox hung on to each game as long as they could, Team Liquid stood their ground and consistently pulled ahead, taking the match 3-1. to one. The next game was Clutch Gaming versus 100 Thieves, mm. and this match was a bit closer. 100 took the first game, but Clutch fought hard for the second. 100 stepped it up for the third, but Clutch answered back even harder, dominating the fourth game. So game five, it was incredibly close, and it was tied There's up until the man. very last minute. Clutch <sighs> pulled ahead for a split second, but 100 answered, snagging four points in the last few seconds of the game to win the match. It's true. Now let's talk about this weekend. Now the finals take place down in Miami at the Fillmore. Echo Fox will battle Clutch Gaming for third, and Team Liquid takes on 100 Thieves for the title of the Spring Split Champs. This will be Liquid's first finals game, and 100 Thieves is a relatively new team, even though Afromoto is basically leading the charge. 100 Thieves also owned by... Uh, cod legend nade shot Ooh. now um that is to happen to be dominating the competition so we've got some awesome action to look forward to i will say just a real casual li little uh, thing here um double lift who is currently playing for i believe team liquid uh he actually just suffered uh, a huge family loss uh oh. it's been reported that his brother actually attacked um and killed his one his I think his mother or his father oh. and then um, his other parent is uh, currently in the hospital. So oh my God. all of the all of our thoughts and prayers with Double Lips family. Uh, and right now there is but there is talk that he will be there in Miami up again up That's against the hundred thieves. Tough. So wow. he's you know he's been playing incredibly well. He's been out of control these last couple of weeks, and he's gonna he's 
Everything that I've heard says he's going to try and go for it, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. If you would like to catch the matches and all of the stories behind them, head to watch.na.lolesports.com. Don't forget to give them a follow, LOL Esports, for the up-to-the-minute news. And, of course, if you want to show some love over to Double Lift um, Absolutely. on his Twitter account, go for it. I mean, I think the, the idea that he would still try and compete is just is super noble, and it's a tell of how passionate you know some of these players get and how attached they get to the games mm -hmm. um, that, you know, even during hard times that they're willing to just go go at it and and it, yeah it's kind of inspiring honestly it is inspiring and, yeah. and i guess in that in that in that competitive mindset you're you're going for it and until yeah. wow work so hard for it and so you know and he is one of the greats i can i put it out there i think he is an ace faker that's what i'm gonna say oh there we go there we go so i think um we're now, yeah upcoming tournament we have trivia oh do we have trivia we have trivia, like we have no. trivia. trivia. We? trivia it is all right trivia it is i hope you all are ready for some trivia because if you're not then you're going to be left behind. Oh, here we go. We're turn this car around. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Yeah, I just don't understand. <laughs> no, we just... Let's take a look at what we've got for the questions. All right. Which team is left in the NALCS finals on okay. this board? I'm sure there's others left, but sure. we just talked about it. We have CLG, Clutch Gaming, Optic Gaming, and 100 Thieves. Ooh, I don't... Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. I'm not going to vote. I'm going yeah, to yeah, yeah. stand back. Yeah, Lennox which is probably still in here. Is left in the NLC. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Everybody. I didn't I didn't understand the question at first. I apparently, you know, I, I It's okay. You know what? This is the, every Thursday for me now. This no, is kind of my this is how I enter the world. It's fine. It right reminds now. me of when I took exams back in like elementary school and they would always <laughs> try, try and trick you. Sure. Um it's quite hurtful, but you know what? That that's Lennox for you. It's fine. <laughs> so <hurtful. He> no. <laughs> All right. Just kidding. So everyone looks like chat's going uh, almost overwhelmingly with the uh, 100 Thieves. And the answer is... Uh, <sighs> I'm going to say definitely 100 Thieves. Yeah, I'm going to go with chat too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Aphromoto, it's, I mean, it, it, this is the, the Nade Shot reference I made earlier. 100 Thieves crushing some of the competition mm -hmm. here. Um, and presumably they will be going up against uh, Team Liquid and presumably double lift if uh, if all things are as they are right now Should so be exciting there's that let's talk to let's uh, let's go for another trivia question get people's names up on the leaderboard here okay okay so what is our next trivia question gonna be so by the way can I put something out there yeah. Telmo the question is uh, who is Aphromoto you actually what you got the the spelling just off whatever, but Aphromoto is uh, uh, a fantastic League of Legends player, and I think you already knew that because you spelled his name correctly. Mm. Well done. Does he have an Afro? He does not have an Afro. Mm. That is a great question, though. He does mm. not have an Afro. You should think about growing one. Well, if you can, should get know. on the Twitter and start that action. Oh, are we going to go to upcoming tournaments now here, I folks? I think we are. Well, no. let's talk about it, because this one's a biggie for us here for us here, Gears fans. Gears fans, big Gears fans. Now, remember, folks, for these tor tournaments that are on the Mixer platform and are a part of Mixer Esports, follow the channel to get a notification when they go live. This channel. We're going to kick it off with some Gears of War. The next Gears of War event is slowly coming up, and they're heading to Las Vegas, baby. Season 2 of the Gears Pro Circuit has been steadily trending upward in terms of storylines and action, so this event should continue to impress all the players and fans who tune into the event. Check out the full schedule on Gears.gg and check out the broadcast on live.gearsofwar.com and mixer.com slash Gears of War. It's true. Now let's talk about the fighting game community. We mentioned it earlier. Starting at 5 p.m. Pacific this Saturday, Body Count Fighting. We'll have Machinima and Body Count Fighting. I just love it. I love it. It's great. Throwing an <laughs> event for Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I think we decided we have decided that is the thing. I say fighters, but whatever you You know what? You want. To each their own. Yeah, there you go. Tekken 7 and, of course, Street Fighter 5 down in Burbank, California. This is one of the few local events you could attend this weekend. But if you can't, we got you. Mixer.com slash BF Fighting to check out the show. That's right. And moving from the virtual to the physical world, Mixer has a new partner on the platform. And if you're into cycling, which who isn't, then this is for you. Every Tuesday for the next few weeks on Mixer.com slash CBR World Cup, the folks at CBR World Cup will be running a weekly league involving real cyclists using their bodies to power virtual avatars against one another. That is insane. Insane. It so sounds so cool because it is. Mm -hmm. These streams are something to be uh, behold. So we implore you to check it out when you have a chance. And you can find out more at cbrworldcup.com. Bonus! 
We'll also be doing an extended show of This Week in Esports. We may have mentioned it earlier, called Road to the Halo World Championship 2018 Finals. Mm -hmm. And that is actually tomorrow. That's right. Hosted Starts, by you. It's, it is, in fact, I am on, I am on that, uh, that desk along with, of course, Tashi and mm -hmm. Strong Side. That's tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. That's 10 a.m. Pacific. This very channel, Mixer.com slash This Week in Esports. Of course, we'll have uh, Tashi, Strong Side. We already talked about that. They're from the 343 industry side. They are going to talk to us. They're going to have a roundtable discussion mm -hmm. highlighting everything you need to know about the Halo WC finals coming up next weekend. We'll have live interviews with players. Also, you never know who might show up. I might show up. It's possible. And we wouldn't know it. <laughs> there you go. So there's that. And I will say we're, we're both very excited for the Halo World Championship. So excited. Like I said earlier at the, at the beginning Big of the fans. show, I am going to be there. And it's going to be great um, to finally go in and see that fandom, the spectacle, everything that uh, accompanies esports uh, and, and the championships. I'm excited. I'm it's, really, it's really some of, the best, some of the best tournament throwers out there. So I agree. You know what else I agree on? What's that? That will be right here each and every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific. That's 6 sure. p.m. Eastern right here at MikeSir.com slash This Week in Esports. Be sure to watch our past episodes right below our channel page and follow us on Twitter at WatchMixer for updates on the show and to know what's happening in the wide world of esports. Wow, that was very, very quick. But also, tune in to hashtag Esports Weekend on Mixer this weekend starting at 9 a.m. Pacific this Saturday with the Paladin Console Series. Mm. We'll also have Smite Minor League, Gears Pro Circuit Las Vegas Open, Madden Ultimate League, and of course the Body Count Fighting event on Mixer.com slash BC Fighting starting at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Dude, man, it is go, go, go. So on Sunday, we once again showcase the North American Regional Tournament for Paladin's Console Series, more Smite Minor League, as well as that epic Gears Las Vegas event. Event. You are not going to want to miss this. Kindly, of course, don't forget about our sister show, right, Malik? That's right. It's called Tips and Tricks, and it's every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, whichever coast you live on. Whichever coast. Um, you could also bing all the other time zones. But it's on Mixer.com slash Tips and Tricks. It's starring Malithan, by the way. You, have a, you guys have a host name? We do have a host name. Uh, we also have a special handshake. There will be prizes and food. I don't know about the prizes. See? Bring your own food. But the it's going to be great. <laughs> this is what happens when my, my co-host keeps rotating. I don't get a cool co-hosting name. I know. Well, okay. Let's, 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 let's figure it out. One. Let's figure it out. So you have Kate and Rukari. How about this? Rukizzle. K Kakari. 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 <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's been decided <laughs> on. Everyone put it in chat. Kakari. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, no. Well, guys, thank you for watching, chatting, asking, and relaying. Follow the channel so you get those notifications when you want us to see us live. And sick for your house. Every Thursday. Stick around here. Streamers hosting things and places. For this lovely prince of drink of waters to my right, Malik, I am Kate. You have been esports.